btmreview.com here, episode 19 of the Retro Rampage podcast. They grow up so fast. Uh, I'm Aaron, and I got Zach here as usual. What's up? Not much. Um, Got lots more news to talk about. E3 is not over. I mean, it's over, but it keeps cascading. The world of E3 is lasting and lasting because all these games and these Kickstarters and all this crazy shit, it just... It just keeps building more headlines and stuff like that. We, we've we discussed all kinds of things, uh, Metroid Prime Federations and all that stuff in, in the last couple episodes. I want to talk about sort of a big surprise. It's kind of like the surprise nobody was expecting because I think half the people never asked for it, but it has a huge fan base, the Shenmue 3. Yeah. Um, but there's obviously there's a tireless uh, group of people that have been begging for Shenmue 3. Um, and... They announced it. They announced it as a Kickstarter. I, from what how I understanding it, it's 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 the original um, creator, which is great. But it's no longer a Sega deal. I think Sony's backing them. I think. Yeah. Um. So, which is kind of weird. I remember back in the day, it was strictly a Sega thing. Yeah. Then when Dreamcast went under, Shenmue Two was on like Microsoft. It was never on a Sony console, which is interesting. But um, long story short. We, we spoke about Bloodstained a week or two ago and how that shattered records um, for Kickstarter raising money uh, for their spiritual Castlevania sequel. Well, that didn't last very long because Shenmue annihilated it. Oh, yeah. And I don't know... I can't keep track. I don't know where it's at this moment. I just know they hit like... Didn't they hit like a million dollars in the first like fucking 15 minutes? Uh, yeah, it was something crazy. Something ridiculous. I mean, don't quote me on that. I mean, I think we're well past. We're well past. It's. Uh, I think it originally asked for four mil. Yeah. And it's way exceeded that. And would you say now they're like, give us ten mil? Yeah. Now they're upping it to ten million. I guess. Why? I guess because they want to make it an open world game. Yeah. Well, I mean, if people are willing to pay for it and they're willing to, you know, deliver on their part of the bargain, why not? My only question. I mean, I don't know. I. I don't. Things like Bloodstained. Things like Mighty Number no. Nine, um, things like Ukulele, those are easy to get behind. I think those are examples of Kickstarter done right. Yeah. Um, Shenmue. Shenmue is kind of the I I mean it's kind of the same thing because it came from like the old school era. I think most of the fans kind of, you know, people now don't know much about it, but you know the fans but, from but, that but it's but it but it is an established it's not like a spiritual successor it's it's a sequel yeah. to a franchise why is sony not having why can't sony just shell out the money yeah that's i don't know it seems like maybe uh maybe they didn't have much faith in it what is the um i think they just want to make sure people want to buy it before they actually uh is there? Do you know what the perks are for this one? Like, are you gonna get a pre-order uh, and then some out of this shit? I've never played any of the Shenmue games, so I plan well, on it though. Now, okay, so I'm all into that, and I'm great with that. Them not having faith in a, I get it, Shenmue. I could feel the same way because you know you have a hardcore fan base that's been clamoring for it, but there's no telling how big that fan base really is yeah. just because they're yelling a lot. I mean, look at Metroid. Yeah, those don't. The numbers don't really equate to all the bitching we're getting. But I, I am curious. I'm scared that this might... I hope it doesn't set a bad precedent for how well this did. Yeah. Sony jumping in, reviving a franchise. A Sony, a juggernaut, that could do this themselves in a blink of an eye. And getting other people to pay for it. I think there's a line that can cr be crossed, and I hope this is not what they keep fucking doing. I hope this is not... I don't want it to get out of hand. Like, I don't want Capcom to be like... They're going to make Resident Evil regardless. They're going to keep making Resident Evils. They're going to keep doing whatever they want to do. But what if they take advantage of the audience? Like, oh, you guys really want a legit horror Resident Evil installment? Prove it. Prove to us how much you want the next Resident Evil to be horror. That's how I. That's kind of the thing I don't like about this stuff. Is it's like it kind of, it kind of brings out the business side. Like it, it kind of makes it like everybody's a businessman, and it's like, I mean, even like bands do it. Like we want, we have this album in us, but we don't want to make it unless we're gonna get a return. It's kind of like, when does it stop being art and it just starts being, you know, yeah, business? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I understand. Well, the music industry, depending on the type of band, I can I can understand because there's no fucking money in that. And it's it's really scary. Those bands are coming extinct. Um, 
But, you know, I just, like, look at Resident Evil. I'm not saying they're guilty of this yet, but, you know, why would they need us to prove how much we want a horror installment of the res next Resident Evil? They're going to make it regardless. I could see them totally saying, hey, you guys want to pay to make to, to decide the direction of the next game? Look, they already know we want it. People are bitching about it. People still buy the Resident Evil games. The reviews are in the shitter, and the classic games are still loved. That's all you need, for God's sakes. Right. Mega Man, I never understood it. This Kickstarter thing is so huge. Now that it, I think it's with Bloodstained, and we're just going with this crazy wave of Kickstarter games this, this past six months. I think that, hey, there's all, there's enough people clamoring for Mega Man. I get it. They don't know exactly how many voices this is or if it's just really loud couple of voices. But, dude, set a Kickstarter. I'm surprised Capcom's not like, all right, let's see how much you want it. We're going to set a Kickstarter. Watch it. I guarantee you it's not going to – I guarantee you it'll do well. Yeah. The people, the people will back Mega Man. Like, I don't even know. It wasn't even like, when you think about how many people back Shenmue 3, it might have been like 20, 30, 40, 50,000 backers. I guarantee you there's 20, 30, 40, 50,000 Mega Man fans, yeah. at least, that will back it. I just don't understand. Like, And it makes complete sense for somebody that doesn't have a studio backing them to ask for fans' help if they want to see it come you know, to life. But when it's a big studio... That doesn't, you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm just very curious to see the precedent it's going to set. Um, because, like I said, it's it's good and bad. Um, yeah, like when is it gonna is it gonna get taken over? Is it gonna get taken too crazy? I mean, like, yeah, you're right. When is the art gonna be affected? Like, let's say, um, yeah, that's like when Star Fox Adventures came out, <laughs> and everybody fucking hated that shit. Oh, was that was, was just, that the one on the GameCube? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's like if that came out today, and they're like, "Oh, do you guys really want to go back to the roots? How much are you willing to pay?" <laughs> let's, let's. I mean, like, okay, when's it going to be about business ethics and doing and catering to your audience and making smart moves, and, or just making or nickel and diming us for every little fucking thing? I mean, and then on one hand, your integrity is going to be compromised. Yeah, because you know maybe people want. Nintendo to keep remaking Ocarina of Time over and over and over and over and over again, <laughs> but like. You know what? They they have taken gambles. They've done the Wind Waker thing, or is open water world sort of a different type of deal. They've they've done these different things, and then they might initially get backlash. So, unless they take risks like that, we're never going to have the next great thing that people want to copy. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Money's the root of all evil to an extent. Um. But yeah, like I said, I mean. I don't know. Uh, you two would just keep releasing the fucking Joshua Tree over and over and over and over again if they had the creative tact in them. Uh, but whatever. I mean, once again, grumpy old man. But like I said, let's not be completely negative about it. There could be a lot of positive things about it. It's a great thing, and I'm stoked about it. I'm actually really excited about this era. Hopefully, I'm just hoping it doesn't get abused is all. Yeah. But I'm stoked that we might be getting the return of some more franchises. So... I want to ask you right now, is there any franchises that you would love to see get resurrected with, with a platform like this? This oh, is a man. really, this is a cool topic. Is there, is there a game or a series of games that sort of just fell by the wayside? Or a game that never got a sequel that you think deserved it? I, uh, that, we actually, uh, on the Zach, Mac and Zach show, we just did this, actually. Uh, oh, I made so a big well then, list of them. Well then, well, then you're prepared. Have you ever played uh, Bully? That was on PlayStation. No, the, Rock, the Rockstar game, right? Yeah. No, I never played it, but I, I I'm familiar with it. Yeah, that was one that we we were mm -hmm. talking about. Okay. I would love for them to uh, get the original Silent Hill team and make a new Silent Hill game. Silent Hill, that would be awesome. I mean, especially after the 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 horrible <laughs> thing with the Silent Hills oh, yeah, and that man. whole deal. Um, no, that would be cool, and it doesn't have to be. It could be. Evil Within type thing. It doesn't have to be a Silent Hills game. I mean, obviously, yeah. You know, Konami owns that. I don't need. I, I, I'm not with something like Silent Hill. I'm not in love with the name Silent Hill because every game's different. It's yeah. not like a, a huge canon like Resident Evil. So you could technically come out with a game that's every bit as awesome as the first couple of Silent Hill games and give it a different title, and it's not really going to mean anything to me. It's totally cool. Yeah. Um. So I think that's a good answer. Um. You know who I think deserves to make a comeback? I know they did. Um. They had a PSN game a few years back, and it was really shortened. It's like four levels, but I loved Rocket Knight back in the day. Oh, yeah. Rocket Knight Adventures, man. I love that first game especially. Um, I think, you know, he's never had a, a game that was in 3D. He's never had a full motion thing. I always thought he was the best Sonic the Hedgehog clone. Yeah. Um, 
But whatever, I mean, like, I don't think I don't think he'd be big enough to. Well, I mean, if it was an indie and a smaller title, I think he could do it. But I mean, there's just there's just a lot of things. Um, I think I think the possibility, man. You know what would be fun? And I, I don't think it would ever have the support. Do you remember Eternal Champions? Uh huh. Oh, you don't remember that? It was a Sega Genesis fighting game, and they had the sequel, uh, Challenge from the Dark Side, on the Sega CD. Uh, I don't think so. I actually, it, it's it's not aged well, but back in the day, I thought it was cool. It was a Mortal Kombat ripoff game, okay. except the fatalities were way more brutal than Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> they were ridiculous, and the idea of the story was kind of neat. I mean, there's all kinds of like niche things I would like to see come back, but the fact is, they're probably dead for a reason, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see what I would like to see Mega Man. You know, it actually blows me away that remember the uh, the first person shooter Mega Man. Yeah, that that whole idea. Why why are they not? That was being made before this 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 crowdfunding thing really took off. This seems like the perfect time to seem like to to bring that campaign back, don't you think? Yeah. Like, hey, you remember all that shit we're working on? I don't I don't know why they just can't build up a whole new tech demo like PS4 fi it. And I'm not saying I'd be super excited for it because I'm not a huge FPS guy, but it just seems like a uh, if it was done right, it would it would it would be like a med it would just feel like a a Mega Man game. Like I think that would be great, kind of a new way to see the bosses. The boss fights would be really different and cool. I I just yeah, it seems like a no brainer, and it seems like a good way to uh, um, sort of catapult the franchise into a modern era and get people excited about it it's kind of like you know fps is huge right now but yeah if they make it mega man they make it capcom and i I just don't see why they haven't they probably considered it i mean i'm acting like they're stupid maybe they have considered it but uh that that there's been enough buzz about that and people still kind of talk about that canceled project and stuff like that i don't know i'd like to see them bring back mega man in some capacity yeah and um, especially if they got the Metroid know. Prime guys to do it again, like Metroid Prime never felt like a generic first-person shooter at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. It, 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 I'm not a big fan of FPS, but like I love, I like Metroid Prime. And thing is that I like some old-school FPS stuff. I think I just grew to hate it in the modern era uh, ever since. Well, now since it's Halo. now it's just the uh, it's just completely the dumbed-down thing to do. It's just regurgitated. It yeah. seems like the same shit over and over and over again. I mean, I know Doom was huge back in the day, and then because of Doom, they had, they had, I mean, there, it was all because Doom was so popular, but then they had a slew of, like, PC and, like, PS1 games that were FPS that were sort of, like, throwaway titles that I actually had fun with. But, yeah, Kickstarter. Um, oh, watch it, man. I mean, if that's what Square, you know what? I'm going to be a hypocrite here, because if Square did that, if Square was like, all right, guys, we're going to see how many of you retro fans are actually out there. You know, we're going to start a Kickstarter if you actually want the next game in the series to be, you know, have a turn-based battle system. How much money are you willing to throw down? <laughs> they might get me, man, because it's like, dude, is this what it fucking takes? It's almost, it's it's like, almost like they're holding your game hostage. Like, come on, give us... They, they, that's exactly what it feels like. like so, <laughs> like any cool thing, good can be produced from it and evil. Um, the other thing that we've yet to talk about was the reveal of Kingdom Hearts 3. And I think I felt the moment when about 100 million nerds all fucking just blew loads in their pants at the same time. I felt it. I felt the earth rumble. Yeah. I've never been a fan of Kingdom Hearts, but I know how massive of a presence it is online and how I'm frankly sick and tired of people bitching about it. So I'm happy it's, we're going to have an end of it. Yeah. I remember people, it, were, people were really mad that we, we saw a whole... Uh, you know, generation that didn't have a Kingdom Hearts 3, which was, you know, the PlayStation 3. And but yeah, like I remember when the Sega one came out, like I want to go back and play them because I remember I, I rented both of them and played them. I just didn't get it. Like, I don't think, you know what I mean? I uh-huh. heard all the hype about it. That was back when like G4 and stuff was really big or tech TV, whatever it was called. So I was like, I want to check these out and I just didn't get it. So now that I'm older and, you know, I, I do get it more, I can kind of. Because they they uh-huh. did uh, the collections like uh, yeah, yeah yeah HD collection yeah for not. PlayStation three so I I was gonna pick those up I I remember when that first got announced I felt polarized because I didn't know what to feel I'm like whoa Final Fantasy mixed with Disney yeah what the like what the hell is this is we're talking about Final Fantasy like characters like Sephiroth who impaled characters in Final Fantasy burned down villages are gonna be in the Disney universe and they're gonna be fucking voiced by Lance Bass yeah it's it's such an odd idea when you first think about it but and i'm surprised it took off the way it did yeah i'm I'm actually a little shocked but anyway at the same time polarized because but wait 
that that's like that's like peanut butter and mayonnaise. But at the same time, I love peanut butter and I love mayonnaise. <laughs> it's like I don't know how to feel about Ew. this. Ew. Eh, eh, eh. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> fucking earnest, but uh, we need sound drops like a motherfucker, man. <laughs> One day, eh, eh, eh. if we had sound drops, I wouldn't do all my impressions, and that wouldn't be fun for me. But so I was polarized, and I played it. I remember I played the first one, and I wanted to love it. I can't think of another game that I wanted to love as much as that. Like, it looked cool. I love the idea of going to the different like sub worlds, like the world of Winnie the Pooh. And like the world of Aladdin, but it just it just wasn't hooking me, and I can't explain to you why. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, the Disney presence was strong. I don't feel like it was quite fifty fifty. Yeah. Um, because they Disneyified all the FF characters. Yeah. They didn't quite FFify the Disney characters. That didn't. That never happened. So I mean, they kind of pussyfied pussified all these characters I loved um, a little bit. But nah, that aside, I just it looked awesome. I just it just didn't deliver. Now whether or not the second game got better and better, I don't know because right? I didn't give it a chance. Yeah. But I don't know. Everybody, I'm. T- I never got the appeal of someone like Sora, the main character, and the Keyblade and. But you know, regardless, fans are super stoked for it, and I don't think it. I'm not. I don't think it has a release date yet. Um, but one of those things where, hey, we're gonna show you a teaser of a teaser of a teaser oh, of a yeah. teaser. Uh, we'll have a countdown for the release date. It, uh, it'll probably be about three years before it is even close to coming out. But anyway, there's that. It's coming out. I saw the trailer. It looked kind of. Uh, I mean, it looked nice. It looked like Kingdom Hearts to me. Yeah. But whatever, just felt I should talk about it because there's a whole shitload of people that are super stoked about it. I, I knew people that when they that were following it like play by play the E3, and then I remember when they announced the FF7 remake, they had the director of of uh, Kingdom Hearts come out, and then people were pissed when he announced FF7 remake because <laughs> people felt like people felt like that was a troll. Like I can't believe they fucking bring out that guy, and it's not even fun. Who's they were wanting to riot? I'm like, how about you mm-hmm. wait till the? How about you wait till the end of the whole fucking E3? <laughs> president before you become a fucking baby <laughs> you know that is people just sound like a bunch of fucking ungrateful kids at christmas man yeah these these gamer nerds it kills me yeah i can't i it, can't sit there and watch the entire thing now that's one of the things i miss about g4 because even though it like towards the end it wasn't about games much at all like they always <laughs> they always showed you know they always did good coverage of g3 and had 24 hour kind of it reminds me of uh no it does remind me of a kid at christmas can you imagine opening up you got a pile of presents and then you see a couple of things shaped like video games. <laughs> and then you open up the first one knowing you want Kingdom Hearts and it's Final Fantasy VII. And then you start throwing a fucking hissy tamper fit. <laughs> and then, but you don't know. It's like, look, you're making yourself look like an ass. Because why, why don't you open up the other one, you dick face? <laughs> you know, it's exactly, it's the kind of thing that would have got my ass beat if I did it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a kid. But, uh, ugh, you got me an N64. I wanted a PlayStation. <laughs> You're a horrible fucking loser of a parent. But, um, no, anyway, so Kingdom Hearts 3, we'll see when that actually comes out. But, you know, I gotta look at the good of it. It is kind of cool that it'll come out, though, because it's good. Hopefully it'll be good for the role-playing genre. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe maybe it'll promote them doing more fan service, because fans really wanted this shit for a long time. Maybe they'll... Maybe they'll make me happy and actually put out another legit uh, dragon quest sequel i really want to i want i want a legit sequel well they had dragon quest 8 on the ps2 which is a top five role-playing game all time it is did you ever play that uh no sensational why they haven't put it in an hd remaster or put it up on the psn is beyond me i know the dragon quest series never sold like insanely well in the u.s but it's the biggest franchise in japan uh but it's cell shaded it looks gorgeous you could hd it it looks beautiful to this day do it yeah. and they released nine the sequel as a strict ds title which is really weird yeah um which is great too but then they announced dragon quest 10 and i was so stoked and it's not quite out here it's coming out on wii u but it's it's an mmo a pay mmo oh yeah i'm like please don't tell me you sold out with this franchise too because i was just holding on to that like final fantasy went down the shitter but at least dragon quest was keeping it real did you ever uh, play uh breath of fire 
Yeah, of course. I love Breath of Fire. Uh, you know, th- uh, one, two, three, and four. I wish th- I wish that they'd put out another one of those. That was that was we could have brought that up. Yeah, in the last little segment. Yeah, Breath of Fire would be awesome. Bring back Breath of Fire. I think that'd be incredible, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I I guess the answer to my question on that last topic was bring back any of these old JRPGs I fucking loved. Yeah. I, why why nobody's made a Chrono Trigger? Another Chrono Trigger yeah, is beyond gonna, me. I was going to mention that. Why? I mean, Nintendo. Um, they they seem to be a they haven't jumped onto the whole Kickstarter thing yet. I mean, I think they have a little too much integrity. They they love fucking losing money. They love taking <laughs> weird ass gambles and just losing all their money. <laughs> um, but you know what? Chrono Trigger would do well regardless. But if they want to do a Kickstarter, I guarantee you it would do insanely well. And and you know, make it more of a direct sequel to Chrono Trigger and not Chrono Cross. Yeah. You know, I think I think would be gangbusters. But anyway, that's all I got, man. More just grumpy old man talk and uh. I don't know. Stuff. E3, E3 trickle. I think E3 stuff is, is slowed down now, so uh, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully we'll get to drive you crazy over the next year with some more, because we know Sony's going to sit there and tease us and trickle little news bits that actually tell us nothing about the Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah. So, so I look forward to driving you crazy, you guys crazy with that, you know. I'm sure we'll get little tidbits along the way, little Easter eggs about how they've changed the battle system, because they've already said that, you know, it's not a simple remake. They're going to overhaul a lot of stuff. They've already said it. They said, look, I mean, basically to say that we're going to keep the major plot points, but it's a different era. It's a different system. We're going to do rewrites. The story's going to be altered, which kind of understand it. I mean, if they had this big PS4 era looking game, big epic game, and it had all the exact same stuff, you know, word for word verbatim, it would kind of be weird, but yeah. hopefully they don't fuck with hopefully, it too much. Hopefully they add cool things like the Resident Evil remake did. Yeah, hopefully they add and not take away, for the love of God. I'm really scared the battle system's going to be different. Yeah. I, I, I have a feeling it'll be modernized, and it's just going to be something that people are going to have to get over, or I'm going to have to get over, because I think a lot of people want it. But I just don't see them doing a turn-based game anymore. I think it's just seen as a dated thing. But <sighs> any, anyway, that's that's it for me today. Uh, more Final Fantasy bitching, some Kingdom Hearts bitching, and... Uh, some Kickstarter Shenmue bitching and uh, who knows Shenmue is cool now that it's actually coming to a PlayStation system I might jump on board and you know what one more thing about Shenmue before we go what a cool idea they're getting so much money for this Shenmue thing they should do a Bayonetta and when this game comes out put Shenmue 1 and 2 on their HD yeah In- exactly. include it include it this thing is getting gangbuster money and you know what it would be a real sign of great customer service, fan service, and just uh, 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 goodwill. Like goodwill and business goes a long way when you when you give a little. And now they could put Shenmue one and two. Now whether or not they have the rights, I, that might be a Sega thing. They have to battle. I yeah. wouldn't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if. I mean, obviously he's allowed to make a Shenmue three. Um, so I don't know what the the you know specifics are there. But if they can do it. Don't Nicholas and Dimas. Don't put them. You know, HD would be great. Don't put them for ten dollars. Like include them in the game, like Bayonetta. I think that would be an awesome little perk, especially since you're going to appeal to a lot of new fans with this game. Yeah. You know, why don't you include uh, or the? Well, then you might you might run the risk of people putting so much time in the first two and not even playing three. <laughs> Whatever though, they should they should do something for the hardcores in that sense. These games aren't around. But Nobody's hey, I playing mean, them. like people people always want to know that. The game's going to be worth 50 bucks, so... Yeah, that's a great incentive. It's like, look, we're going to give it to you, and we're going to do HD ports. Like, if they if they put them all in one, I'd, I'd buy it day one, just because... No, don't... absolutely. Like, the Bayonetta thing. I mean, who knew that was going to happen? That was That's just a goodwill thing. They did not have to do that. Yep. Didn't have to do that. So I think that would be cool, and that'd be cool if they announced that right away, you know? And yeah, exactly. It's like, wow, all I have to do is, you know, pre-order my game or whatever, and I know I'm going to get... I'm no, I, I, you know, I don't know how the third game. I know I'm at least going to get these first two, and even if I never play the first two, I'm getting an awesome bang for my buck. Good lord! Yeah. So anyway, those are my final thoughts. Uh, thank you guys all for listening. Hopefully, we'll see you back next week. And uh, thanks for tolerating our bitching. I'm Aaron. I'm Zach. See you guys later.